If you're born in India, the biggest failure in your life actually happens before starting even your career. And that is failing in an entrance exam and not getting admission into a government college. And that is something that happened with me about 1.5 years ago. It's almost 1.5 years ago at this point. As much as I like hate talking about that specific period of my life, um, this is what I'm going to do for the entire video. And I'll also be telling you how I got comfortable with this idea that I failed in like a major thing in my life at least that's what is told by the society and even on top of that i'll be talking about what all lessons i learned and if i were to do this again what i'll actually be doing hope you guys are doing great and so am i so if you have been on this channel for a while now you might be aware of this fact that i'm an engineering student by profession and there's a lot of students out there who are also pursuing engineering and this is something that i probably wanted to talk about for the longest time ever since i like started my channel about almost like a year ago i mean it's been a year ago it was like last year in february something like that so i think this is something that a lot of people in india go through and a lot of people don't really know how to deal with it a lot of people really fall into depression and that's like a really sad phase of somebody's life so firstly i'll be kind of like sharing my own story and i'll be talking about how i just got into this iit j thing and this whole engineering realm you can sort of say well like everyone else who gets into engineering by their own choice or their parents choice if not both it's usually the case that you are good at math or you score good marks in your 10th grade if not both and what really happens as a by product is that in your 11th and 12th class you actually end up taking science and you know you basically get two options it's medical or non medical and in case you hate biology and rot learning like i did you usually go for non medical and that's exactly what i did and in case you want to know my marks because I don't want to seem like a kid who is like bragging about anything like that or something. I was a decent student. I was not the best. I was not the worst. If you want to know my marks in my 10th class, I scored 91.4% and in my 12th class I scored 89.6% and in my J exam I scored 88.72% I I suppose something like that. So basically long story short, if you don't choose medical, you're like literally left with an option and that is engineering and that is exactly what I did. And I mean, you're basically automatically left with that option only. So just to spice things up a little bit, what really happens after that is you start going to coaching classes and you start preparing for entrance exam and what really happens is that you get into this engineering realm aka iit j so what was life like when i was preparing for iit j well to be honest it's exciting in the beginning like everything that you start whether it's a startup or you start learning something new or it's a career or a job or just anything else it's exciting to study physics and mathematics well chemistry not that much but you know but here is kind of like where it gets really difficult and especially if you're passionate about it especially like i was about 3 or 4 years ago i was doing that between 2018 19 something like that and i gave my exam in 2020 the thing that is so absurd about it and the thing that nobody tells you is that after a certain period of time you just don't like it anymore there's just this phase when you stop feeling good about it your passion really goes down the drain it's not like you're not passionate about it it's just the way life goes on it's like you have a series of days where you just don't feel good i mean that's pretty much life and that has almost always happened with everybody that i've met so far but the problem with that is especially when you're preparing for iit j is the fact that you are studying for four different things at the same time you're studying for school you're studying for school exams you're studying for your coaching institute you're also studying for the coaching institute's exam as well so four different things at the same time and you're not feeling good mentally so it's no good and specifically in my case the problem that i had to face during that whole two year phase was the fact that i had my school exam that is the unit test that we used to have in our school in like all through 6th till 12th and it it started for me in 11th and 12th i had those tests on monday and even my coaching had a test on monday so as it seems it seemed a bit pro problematic to begin with so it becomes extremely difficult and as things go by it becomes even more difficult to cope up with all four of those things and some students just kind of like, leave some things behind like they either skip school or just leave their coaching institute and just study for school so the entire time of about 2 years or 
it it was about two years till the pandemic hit, and, and I'm coming on to that story as well. What happened in those two years was that it just went by me preparing for the entrance exam and just ignoring the school little by little as time went on. It was somewhere around the middle of twelfth class. It was like around July or August, some as far as I can remember. I was not really feeling it. I didn't feel like doing it. Like I didn't feel great about it. Even my passion for IDJ just went down the drain. And the thing is that even if I look back on it, there's like nothing, nothing that I could do. And I look back on it like multiple times. I have made like entries about what I could do better. And honestly speaking, I could not have done anything better. And in that specific phase of my life. I started staying sad you can sort of say and don't worry I won't be talking about depression in this video cuz I mean this channel is not dedicated to that and I don't want to like put warning in this video so I won't be talking about that so coming back to the story so that specific part of my life or that specific time just went by me preparing for it anyway so finally when the time came for the first attempt that is the January attempt so I kind of like had this plan that I was going to just ignore my school for a while because I mean my board exams were roughly speaking Two months away, and I'll be just focusing on this first attempt, and I'll just try to score as much as I can. But guess what? Things don't work like you imagine. That is exactly what happened. You know, there's this Murphy's law where he says that if something has to go wrong, it will, and that is exactly what happened with me at that specific point of time. So what happened was basically five weeks before my exams began. Well, I was all set for the exam. We were ready for the last test series that I was supposed to give. But what ended up happening was that my school called me and they were like, "Well, you have to give your pre-board exams," which was not something that we were expecting. And as far as I can remember, it was not just pre-boards. It was like mock pre-board. and i was like well what's really the meaning of mock pre board because the whole purpose of pre board is to prepare you for board and mock pre board so you can prepare for pre board makes zero sense so we ended up skipping the mock pre board exams and then what really happened was we had to give the pre board because we didn't do that so that whole like Three weeks out of that five-week period just went by like that. So I could not give like that whole test series, and I couldn't revise the syllabus on time. And revision is extremely important in case you meet anybody who has cleared the exam or scored well enough in that exam. To be very honest, my exam didn't go that well. I knew that even before giving the exam because it was kind of like a bunch of chapters. from 11th class that I didn't study that well at that specific point of time and as a result I ended up scoring about 88.7273 percentile as I mentioned and it's not a pretty good rank and here is kind of like the interesting thing it was way below my expectations and here's what i mean by that like if you join any coaching institute there's like an average that they give you before you give your exam um somewhere around the month of october or november before like they have their final test series and i had an average score as far as i remember of 173 or 174 and the breakdown for that was like 65 60 50 and that was like chemistry maths and physics was as as far as i remember the least so my rough estimation was 174 170ish and that usually gives you about you know 97 percentile or 96.5 at max something around that unless the exam is like way too easy and everybody scores 250 something like that It, it's usually around that so my expectations were like hey i'm going to get about at max 95 percentile not below that but when the result came and it was like 88 point something i mean it it was it was weird because i have never assumed of that reality so what ended up happening after that is that you have your practical exams for you know from school's perspective and then they just kind of like took a good chunk of january so my board exams were to start from 24th feb and you already know feb is a small month it doesn't really have a lot of days so i hardly had like 3 weeks to prepare for my board exams and there was a lot of syllabus there's like a good chunk of syllabus that was remaining and in that specific phase it was extremely hard to study for those because like even from that mindset you're like completely blown away by the fact that you didn't get the result of your expectations and it's quite disappointing to be very honest so what ended up happening was that like um i gave all of my exams like the last exam that i gave was mathematics and it was on 17th March 2020 just before the pandemic had hit I think it was on 19th or 20th we had a last exam on 21st or 22nd and it was for computer science and that was it our board exams were over but guess what the pandemic had hit and everybody was afraid in case you remember back in the day <laughs> the, the statement makes me sound so old but everybody was like so afraid our computer science exam was cancelled and the whole entrance exam were cancelled so the second attempt which was supposed to be held in the month of april were also cancelled both for je as well as neat and after that 
the exams got carried on and happened in the month of september so you can imagine from a mindset's perspective you were supposed to give that exam in april now you're giving that exam in september i prepared for that exam five times and i clearly remember i gave a test series after the other after the other and the pandemic just continued and continued and we still have the pandemic we kind of like kept postponing it and after a certain point i just gave up i was like that's it i'm not studying for the exam that's it and even on top of that because the exam situation kind of like got cancelled mm -hmm. private universities which used to have their own exams back in the day didn't have their exam they just took all the students they completely filled out their admission form and all that stuff based on cbsc marks and as i said i was not preparing for cbsc i was preparing for je so my cbsc result was also not that great it was 89.4 or 6% as i said and my score for pcm was about 84 85 so that didn't help either so you can kind of like imagine what really happened in that specific phase of my life and it was really hard for me to accept that for such a long part of my life but now i'm really comfortable so now i'll be talking about all the lessons that i've learned from that specific phase of my life if not like more because i also had the pandemic in between to just add on the flavor to it but here's everything that i've learned so far so lesson number 1 You shouldn't do something just to fit into the society. You know one of my favorite YouTubers in the world of self-help is Lana Blakely and she said in one of her videos that the more you try to fit in the society the less you actually fit in the society. So just don't force yourself to be like the cog to the system where you shouldn't be like that at all. Keep your ego aside for a second and think about the things that you're genuinely interested in in the long term and the things you will continue doing doesn't matter what happens. It's just far less interesting to have a life where you just hate yourself day in and day out. Just have something different in your life going on and that actually creates a greater impact and makes a fun and engaging conversation where you're actually talking to people and not the regular every day kind of life. So the second thing that I learned is that don't so easily trust people. We often forget in real life that everyone isn't just our friend. People just have capitalistic motives and they want to exploit you because let's be honest, not everybody is there for your good. Not everybody is willing to help you. But on the surfacial level, from a marketing standpoint, they definitely make it seem like that. Especially if they can get you invested into something emotionally. I mean, you're pretty much done in that case. So the lesson number third that I've kind of like learned over these years is the fact that not all competition is good. Well, a lot of people will always tell you like, "Hey, competition is good. You should know about that." Well, sunshine, it isn't really thought through that well. You're just living your life with fallacy. Competition is good only when you have competition in a form of a positive sum game where everybody mutually helps each other and they improve overall as a system. And J is not a good competition. The entire gist of J is that you have very little amount of seats and you have a huge amount of participants and in order to get those seats you have to just beat everybody else out of the competition just to make your way into it i've often heard like j gurus that are there on the internet i mean every other guy these days now is trying to be the j iit j guru kind of like the guy so i've always heard them talking about like hey you know the iit wants this that's the reason the paper is so tough and that's the reason this is that and this is that and they just try to like drive every sort of reason from that kind of ideology and i can tell you j doesn't want anything from you nothing they don't want shit the reality is that there is very little amount of seats and what they want to see is that what are actually the candidates who are genuinely interested to see the genuineness of the candidates they will give you a bunch of random shit in the exam that is nothing to do with your life i mean i can honestly tell you that syllabus that's there in the exam has no practical use like i'm doing my engineering right now and i can genuinely tell you right now even when i'm like in my fourth semester of my engineering there's nothing that is actually applied even in engineering forget about practical life for a second everything that was taught back in the day when i was studying for my je exam it is not used at all it's garbage it has no value of itself so the fourth thing that i've kind of like learned in that specific period of my life and it was especially in the pandemic it was that traditional route doesn't work anymore i mean i can make a whole video dedicated towards this and i can mathematically prove you that this whole idea of getting a four year degree and working for a company for 40 years just to get you know retirement funds and have a pension and just you know this idea of a good ending and you know the sunset and there's a old couple and you know the end credits are rolling in and you know it, it makes a good story let me tell you something it does not work anymore it does not it is a failed system and i can explain you how the traditional route doesn't work anymore i'll make a dedicated video where I mathematically by code as well as on paper i'll explain by mathematically speaking it won't work anymore like legit it won't work anymore so here's lesson number 5 figure 
figure out at the earliest what your true calling is. See, I don't think there's a point in life where you should hit yourself for five days of the week just so you can have enough money to enjoy the rest two days and just repeat this process over and over again for 40 years until you die someday. It's not worth it. I mean, as time goes on, you, you will just realize that doing this is extremely boring and not fulfilling at all. And everybody on the internet who is like asking questions about what they should really do with their life and how to quote unquote figure out what their calling is or what their passion is. My take on that is extremely simple. It's that imagine if you were to never die, let's say. What was that one thing, quote unquote, that one thing, write it down on a piece of paper, write down all the things that you can do and just find that one thing that you're willing to do if you were to never die and life was running in this loop kind of thing. What was that one thing that you would do? And that's your passion. That's it. You don't need any self-help advice. You don't need to read any books on that kind of stuff. I mean, you can do that if you wish to, but all of that will come to this gist only. And that's it. So the lesson number six that I learned from all of this, and this again came in the pandemic, was that traditional education will bring you no good. And as I said earlier that I'll be making a dedicated video about explaining why the traditional route won't work mathematically. I'll do it on piece of paper as well as through code. But the point is that in this age where we have internet and everybody is so aware, the traditional route doesn't work anymore. The traditional education will bring you no good. Because as I said, people are so aware that everybody knows something and that will certainly make you no special. What we really need to work on is a specific knowledge. And this is something that Nawal Ravikant, you know, talked about in detail. So what specific knowledge is, is basically a specific thing that you're good at. So let's say you want to be good at sales, for example, let's say. So, you know, there's a traditional route of becoming good at sales. You know, there's books that talk about manipulation. You ask a question, they ask a question. If they ask a question, don't answer. You know, a bunch of that kind of stuff. You have theories and, you know, sales techniques, how to pitch, how this and that. But let's say you have a psychology degree with sales. So your psychology degree, because you know, human behavior and how, what people like and what people don't and how you can get them hooked in and how to get them invested emotionally. That psychology degree has become your specific knowledge. Just alone having that psychology degree won't help you that much, but you know, psychology degree backed up with sales, those two things stacked on one on top of the other creates just like a really powerful combination. And this is a very basic example. You can just stack one on top of the other and four, five, six trades as much as you want. And this is your specific knowledge. If you learn to scale the specific knowledge, this is where money lies in today's day and age. So the seventh thing that I've kind of like learned over these years passing by is the fact that, I mean, it's my theory and I just don't recommend anyone studying for a JE exam because one of the things that I learned and that was kind of like a shady thing about J exam was that everybody who was teaching physics, chemistry, math was an engineering student or even worse, quote unquote, an IIT. And it's like such a shame on the system that basically there's people out there who have graduated from IIT or have done engineering from reputed colleges in the country. And they are teaching you for this exam and they're selling you this idea that your life will be great when you clear this exam. But you know, what's the best thing that they are doing? They are teaching you back for this exam. So you can kind of like see where this thing is going. And you know, somebody can someday maybe convince me that I'm wrong, but at least as of now, that's what I truly think. So I feel like I talked a lot about the lessons that I've learned from JE and a lot of people would be like, my perspective is just like, we're too biased and I'm like, we're too skeptical about it. But the thing is that this, I think one positive reason behind studying for JE exam and one positive experience that I think still helps me quite a lot. The only thing that I think went right in that specific period of my life was the fact that I built a strong work ethic. And I have gained confidence in myself in a sense that I know that I'm better than most people, not because I'm quote unquote better or more competent than others, because I know that when it comes and when shit hits the fan, I can put more work in and be more productive than the vast majority of the crowd, the average people that are out there. And I personally think that when you read in the newspaper or hear in the you know news or even on social media these days that IITNs are so successful, it's primarily because they have a really strong work ethic and because we live in a free market, AKA capitalistic society, that really helps you climb up the hierarchical ladder, especially in terms of finances, whether you start your own business or work for any company, that really helps quite a lot. So I think that's pretty much it from my side. I hope you guys learned something new. If this is your first time on this channel, my name is Zeev Kadaria and I like making videos, intentional videos about productivity, how to get ahead in life, all that kind of stuff. So that's it from my side. If you made it this far, make sure you guys like the video. That tells me that you're full of energy and you're pumped. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next video.